Hey everyone, I'm here today to talk about motorways. It's a pretty short upload, but it, this is applying to UK motorways. If you live in another country, you still may pick up some hints and tips, so stay tuned. The road leading onto the motorway, we call it a slip road or an acceleration lane. Sometimes there's a longer one for slower vehicles and a shorter one for faster vehicles. It doesn't matter which one you take, you might find that the shorter one is backed up and the longer one is clear. As long as when you accelerate up to the speed of the vehicles that are in lane one, you fit in nice and smoothly. That's your correct entry speed. It's the speed of the vehicles in lane one. I personally prefer to indicate. I know there's nowhere else I'm going, but there's more of a chance that they're gonna see me. I recommend you get used to the higher speeds on the motorway first before you consider overtaking. I feel that shoulder or blind spot checks are essential before changing lanes, especially on a motorway, because of the faster speeds involved and it's easy for cars to creep up into your blind spot. Also, vehicles in lane three may be moving into lane two as you move out into lane two and you're in each other's blind spots. So that's where that shoulder check is essential. It's the same as when you're coming back in from lane three. Make sure you don't move in when there's a vehicle in lane one directly to your left. In other words, don't change lanes into a vehicle's blind spot. Faster speeds mean longer following distances and more focus needed due to shorter reaction times. The general rule in the UK on motorways is that you keep in the leftmost lane unless you're overtaking vehicles. I use the 20 second rule personally when it comes to moving in to the left again after overtaking. Because there might be a lorry there and if you do it less than 20 seconds you're always going to be in and out and in and out. And there's a danger when you do move in, a car behind you isn't planning ahead and you're approaching the lorry and they're going to come up. And I've seen it a lot where they'll come up really quick and then suddenly sit in your blind spot. So that's where you need to plan. In the same vein as well, as you're in lane two overtaking the lorry, there might be a car that's actually approaching the lorry and you need to anticipate that he's gonna to want to overtake that lorry too. So it's usually helpful there to check your mirrors and either slow down or if it's safe, do an overtake into lane three and let him overtake. Before overtaking or changing lanes, check the possible speed of approaching cars from behind by using your mirrors efficiently, but try not to look in them for too long. As traveling at 70 miles an hour, you're doing about 35 meters per second. It's about 105 feet a second. And quite often when vehicles are in lane three and they're overtaking, I've seen them doing 100 miles an hour, but it's hard to judge it initially. So a couple of looks, you'll see the difference between how small the car is initially and then how big it gets as it approaches you. I would indicate a little longer than normal when I'm overtaking, increasing the chances of being seen by any cars in front who may be planning to overtake their vehicle in front of them, or any potential overtaking cars from behind whose speed, as I've just said, you may have misjudged. Indicators are not guaranteed to be seen, but I feel that there's more of a chance of you being seen. Avoid being in the vehicle you're overtaking's blind spot for any longer than is absolutely necessary. And also consider in the lane moving over to lane three as you're overtaking the vehicle to just give yourself that little bit more room. But do expect them to suddenly come out on you. It's gonna be unlikely though if there are no vehicles near them, but still never guaranteed. Be careful of side winds when overtaking high-sided lorries or having them overtaking you if you're coming to an exit, for example. Approaching them, you can get into a, like a being sucked in feeling just before you pass them. And then as you're passing them, you don't get a lot. And then as you go into the front of the vehicle, you'll feel the wind suddenly blow you out again. So be prepared for that. If they're overtaking you, it's the same thing. Also, if you're being overtaken by a vehicle, be aware that they may suddenly do a, a Formula One cut back in and then slow down. And if they do that, be prepared to extend your braking distance or following distance to make it safe again. Now you have to be wary of motorway services because the driver may suddenly realize that he needs fuel or a toilet and then he'll suddenly brake or dive over into lane one for the exit. Also vehicles will be emerging from the services and want to join the motorway, possibly making vehicles in lane one move out suddenly in front of you. So your planning ahead again will allow for all of this. Be prepared to change lanes of course.
here's the services, I need some fuel countdown marker at 3, so indicator on 200 meters 100 meters off we go now remember we're used to traveling at a faster speed so things will come up on you much quicker than you expect so let's have a look at the markings on the road I need petrol lorries other traffic so we're moving over here cars and coaches cars and coaches do try and make sure before you set out on your journey fuel that you fill up at a local petrol station main reason being is that these services petrol stations are much more expensive look at that it's about 20 pence a litre more and coming back onto the motorway you may find the slip road is shorter than normal it's not too bad in this occasion but let's enjoy Motorway junctions, or where motorways merge, can have backed up traffic or congestion and vehicles making sudden lane changes again, just like the services. Planning ahead and anticipation again is essential, maybe changing lanes and allowing for this to happen. In heavy traffic, expect other vehicles to squeeze into your following distance zone and then prepare to move back again to increase that safety. Still plan far ahead for vehicles braking in front, maybe three or four vehicles in front, so that you can make your braking plans to allow for tailgaters behind you. Filtering on motorways isn't something that I normally do unless it's a total jam and I'm doing no more than about 20 miles an hour. I've got uploads on filtering and I'll try and pop them in the suggestions or cards or maybe even on the video at the end. When you're exiting the motorway, initially you'll get very clear large signs with the exit number on the bottom left hand corner I think it is. So we've got a mile to go, which is approximately 60 seconds. And you can see that there are two exits on the A610, an earlier one and a later one. Make sure that you're in lane one for the exit before the 300 meter sign, and then it'll be 200 meters and then 100 meters. We recommend you use your mirrors, pop your left indicator on at around the 300 meter point. So here's the half mile, I'm going to count around 30 seconds, 30, 29, 28, 27, 26, 25, 24, 23, 22, 21, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, mirrors, 10, indicator. Do bear in mind as well that some bikes have got self-cancelling indicators, so beware of them switching themselves off before you exit. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. It's difficult for some people to judge what half a mile is. I usually find that helps me. Watch for last minute exiting drivers too. Maybe they've not seen the exit early enough or just simply bad drivers, but you still have to plan ahead and allow for them to. I know it's only been a short upload, but I hope that uh, this has made sense to you. Feel free to comment below, and if there's anything that I may have missed or anything that you'd like to add, pop it in the comments and we can have a chat about it. Thanks for watching, see you soon, bye bye.